Yeah, this slide. Okay. 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 over 50 years that i myself don't know how can i give an answer for that but i'll go through so resurrecting clinical pediatrics what 50 years of pediatrics has taught me so now of course i find i always tell uh, president dr bakul parekh that because of this covid one spin of benefit was finding out youngsters and bringing them to platform and we can see so many of them are so good in their uh, clinical work up and presentation and uh, am i correct dr bakul parekh i have repeatedly told that you have done such a wonderful thing so so what a 50 year old man is going to tell but one of the hall is you know in memory of my professor he was an from canada he obtained his pediatric degree he is brother of uh, nobel laureate chandrashekar so he was in delhi safdarjung and then he was transferred to jipmer as professor of pediatrics so what he has taught me history taking history taking he found out that children in pondicherry is having more number of attacks of respiratory infection lower respiratory infection getting admitted twice or thrice a year whereas in delhi which is a cold place and canada where winter is so severe he didn't find so many children having that then he found you know in the rounds he used to spend 2 hours taking rounds and found out from each of these mothers that they had a practice of instilling oil while giving bath to the child what do they do is the lady who comes who delivered the child comes home and they say the child is having nasal congestion and we want to take the phlegm out and they put me you no know, oil and massage the tongue and blow through the nose and these children had lipoid pneumonia and then of course he had made us do lung biopsy of course those days we need not have to take uh, consent form etc uh, that was you know strictly the laws of ethics were not followed but anyhow because it's a consolidated lung none of the child uh, developed pneumothorax had died so he found and after that we started telling that there is uh, danger in this please don't give it and gradually it is coming down even occasionally now cases we get in jipmer so one of the important things which has prevented by finding out what is a bad child rearing practice is this lipoid pneumonia similarly two other things i would like to tell indian child cirrhosis was very rampant every time when we are pgs we used to have three cases of child indian child cirrhosis and most of them they died before the age of 5 years and of course many people icmr research committees have all gone through they have found out whether australia antigen or whether it is uh, inborn errors of metabolism all sort of research was going on but finally mowat and portman came to pune and uh, uh, they worked with uh, the pune pediatrician and uh, they found they brought the slides and put the copper staining because copper is known to be a hepatotoxic agent but to their surprise they found that the copper was not deposited in between the portals constricting and causing cirrhosis but it was obstructing the mitochondria they were deposited in the mitochondrial apparatus causing respiratory our mitochondria is here mitochondria of iap uh, who is sitting there and i'm very happy is there listening to me so this copper was there in the mitochondrial apparatus almost strangulating the respiratory i know spurt of mitochondria and they cause death whereas wilson disease doesn't cause death like that they go on for ages and then they get treatment and now of course liver transplantation is there but once it was found that people were told an atomic absorption spectrometer in uh, rotak they had sent the material and they found that the copper was deposited and from that time onwards we don't see cases of indian child cirrhosis another child rearing practice which was found out is the difference sudden infant death syndrome 
we are not having sudden infant death syndrome in you know chinese china india and other oriental countries whereas it was so common in other countries so many hypotheses was given but they found that we are putting our child in the not in the prone position the supine position so and nowadays you find that all the hospitals in western countries and australia new zealand etc they said at the time of discharge don't put the child in the prone position so that is the these are the three important conditions which are very important which can be easily prevented and couch milk intolerance he told me the first case and he found a child now of course the lady is still living in pondicherry she was in france so that child had repeated diarrhea they thought of lactose intolerance etc but he thought of cow's milk intolerance and he withdrew the cow's milk and then the child has thrived and now of course she is uh, near my house and uh, she was in france for a long time she has come back to india to settle so gluten enteropathy he is also the one person who found that a child had severe diarrhea etc and child was uh, having repeated pain abdomen etc not thriving well so he uh, of course we didn't have uh, investigations to prove that time and then he withdrew wheat totally and the child became all right and child started thriving and you know in uh, when where i was in mahulan azad medical college we had a child the child had uh, no greasy stool and the child was having failure to thrive she was a 8 year old girl i still remember and those days we didn't have sweat chlorators etc you no know, sophisticated and in winter how can you get sweat in uh, delhi so they told you cut the exposed x ray and put it in the stool and keep it overnight if it gets bleached that means the child is having celiac if it is bleached it's not celiac disease it's not getting bleached it's celiac disease that is how later of course child was sent to all india institute and they found by biopsy that child had celiac disease then of course congenital lobar emphysema he is the one who made us aware of it and uh, he because of that i could diagnose congenital lobar emphysema by percussion you can find that the child with pneumonia the side will be normal and also by auscultation two important methods we can find out it's not pneumothorax it's only congenital lobar emphysema because of diminished arrhythmia in that side and hyper resonance in that area with x ray showing mediastinal shift and of course he has also been regularly teaching about growth and development not only that psychological development comparing all the three theories of uh, psychoanalytical theory psychosexual theory and cognitive theory of piaget and uh, you know that insight he gave how the child has psychological development occurs and then he is he'll be delving on degenerative disorders when they are admitted in great detail about various inborn errors of metabolism causing degenerative neurology degenerative disorders that is his contribution to my knowledge what i learned i already mentioned okay keep mind open eyes open and ears open and observe listen and see then you will not miss the diagnosis take history by encouraging mother not interfering frequently asking positive questions leading questions ask her to talk patiently always find out their child running and feeding practice i already mentioned always give considerations to student suggestions she was always keen to find out the opinion of the students and i will tell you about molar its meningitis this child was repeatedly admitted with uh, meningeal symptoms for three or four days and this particular child lp showed polymorphs and turbid fluid and we treated with antibiotics but within uh, two weeks or three weeks child came back and we found this child is having was having uh, lymphocytes probably they we thought probably we missed tuberculous meningitis and child was put on anti tuberculous treatment and subsequently of course she went home within four days she became all right and repeatedly she was coming like that then of course one post graduate told i mean undergraduate was preparing for going to uh, usa he was reading harrison so he suggested very feebly with so much of respect you know with fear that i am going to tell something and he told the rounds sir there is a consider condition known as recurrent benign meningitis and he said what is that he said molarets meningitis sir what is it can you tell me more about it he asked he told it, i am reading harrison sir it is given the latest edition so he told why don't you bring the edition the afternoon i can see and finally next time the child was admitted we stopped all the treatment and observed the child child became totally all right 
and later of course it was published uh, a few years back after later when dr uh, vishnu but was doing pyogenic meningitis thesis he saw that case sheet and he published it along with dr ic verma so that is the type of respect he gives the, to the opinion of house surgeons and uh, so that's a very important quality we must never dismiss if you know that intraocular lens was uh, suggested by one post an undergraduate watching the operative procedure in you uh, know extraocular lens extraction and he was murmuring to another fellow student why can't they think of installing one lens inside the anterior chamber and of course the person readily i forgot readily thomas or something so he uh, heard about it and then he was there in the uh, british war as a pilot and he found that uh, that flexible sheet was there in the ice due to a uh, bombing by and then he undertook and then intraocular lens came so it's always important that we keep open mind and allow free discussion between post graduates undergraduates as well as others he never intimidated bullied scolded or disgraced students in front of others he never made them belittle and have a bad opinion about themselves he never showed favoritism partiality or preferences whether they are local students or from outside because he was there abroad he had seen then of course another child was admitted with self mutation uh, mutilation behavior 8 year old admitted for vomiting slurred speech dizziness urinary retention two episodes of brief generalized convulsions and abnormal behavior pulling of her hair frequent biting of fingers with resultant bleeding and ulceration what is again history the child was scolded and beaten by drunken father the previous day what does it say dr of course tangeval if he is there he knows whenever such there there may be a impulsive you know impulsive uh, behavior of the child to take some poison which is available they will try to frighten the parents so he is a dr balakrishnan said so child the old the grandfather was taking anti blood treatment this child had uh, swallowed inh tablets just to make the parents get upset so this child he diagnosed inh psychosis after predoxin was given the child became totally normal remarkable and most admirable quality of dr s balakrishnan open to suggestions from students i already mentioned this particular case okay molaris meningitis then 1971 pondicherry gh as a dch pg those days we had a one unit in the pondicherry dch because jipmer was new and the number of people coming to jipmer was less because of the lack of transport system so we were posted one unit was always stationed there four year old child with prolonged intermittent fever for two months weight loss irritability abdominal distension weight and height less than 10 percentile for age gross muscle wasting with loss of subcutaneous tissue was there generalized less than 1.5 cm liver and spleen not matted anemia was moderate hepatosplenomegaly was mild regression of gross motor milestones were there after investigations and treated as disseminated tp but no response sorry for the spelling mistake after a month joint pains and swelling occurred this child was treated as tuberculous condition because those days whenever unexplained hepatomegaly fever for a prolonged period that is a dictum you start anti tuberculous treatment because it was so rampant but this child turned out to be a case of uh, juvenile rheumatoid systemic juvenile or rheumatoid arthritis the child was a uh, bicycle lender for uh, renting you know for so i used to take cycle on rent and go and his son finally he died the age of 8 years and this is uh, my another uh, professor who was in delhi dr indra narayanan and of course i happened to write a testimonial as a student later she wanted for becoming a professor in uh, georgetown university so she asked me to send uh, a testimonial about her okay that was surprising a student who was a student had to give testimonial for her appointment as a adjunct professor just like dr tangavel has made me adjunct professor in metha hospital so she has told me how to do meticulous examination she was interested in neonatology she started the neonatology unit in uh, jipmer and then every child she will see in the general ward also she will not miss because those children will immediately discharge 
they would go and they will never be able to consult any pediatrician later because they are from villages etc so she will go and do meticulous examination strip the ch the child will be stripped and then she will find for evidence of any congenital malformations she will make us do otolonis test and uh, warlow's test and also for extra crease etc congenital dislocation of hip that is a meticulous way she has taught us and if she wants us to take bp she will again check herself whether because of the auscultation gap because we take the blood pressure you know systolic blood pressure by the mercury sphygmomanometer we will raise it but we will not go here. so like that we have missed two cases of uh, glomerulonephritis because they have just taken bp and the auscultatory gap will be there and sounds will be there so it will give a false systolic blood pressure so so to examine sick children periodically she will make it a point that every sick child should be seen and as soon as you come to the hospital and again before going for lunch again after coming from lunch before the class and also at the time of discharge and the child is sick please hand over to the duty doctors properly that is a principle she was following dietary intake she will calculate for every preterm child the weight every third day and then she will adjust the time those days we are not talking about breast milk and of course lactogen lactotest was added to the this thing and it was given and she will see whether the child is increasing weight etc and she made us calculate the calories and protein intake of the preterm child etc <clears throat> of course i went to do my md after dcs to mohan azar and uh, dr Panna Chaudhary, President, he was senior resident for me and Ashok Gupta, Ashok Datta was one year senior to me. Because of them, my stay was pleasant and I learned so much from their meticulousness, etc. <clears throat> the attitude, positive attitude, bedside behavior, commitment, dedication, duty, consciousness and discipline. And they were very helpful in uh, nurturing me, almost like, uh, you know, their own son. Enthusiasm, because I didn't know Hindi at that time. So the first two, three months was very difficult though i had done my dch i was registered for one year before i went to this thing so and all of them know who know panna Chaudhary, he had enthusiasm energy and encouragement so also dr datta so i owe so much to them and of course dr k r setaraman he was junior to me by two years but he became uh, he was in chitra Trinad, but he came back because he was not selected there as a lecturer and uh, he was uh, you know he introduced the computerization in Jipmer and also he taught uh, evening classes on computer, how to handle computer, etc. And echocardiography, he taught the basics of echocardiography. Later, I had a machine and I could do it. And the essential drug concepts and rational drug therapy, we had conducted workshops in various places in Kerala, etc. Then 1972 case, please tell me, uh, seven minutes is there, okay. So Pondicherry GH, 13 months, mainly infant with high grade fever, vomiting, irritability and fast breathing for two days. Born of non-consanguineous Franco-Indian parents. Okay, that is French citizens who are getting pension from France. Except for frequent urination, thus no other symptoms were reported. On examination, temperature was 102 degree Fahrenheit. Dehydration was present, dry mouth, irritability. Respiratory rate 64 minute, deep sighing, respiration, skin turgor was uh, less wrinkling was the other vitals are normal, but in spite of degradation, child was pausing urine. CVS normal, respiratory system normal, per abdomen, liver 2 centimeters, spleen not palpable. CNS, except for irritability, no other findings. Of course, many of you know, and Dr. Tangavelu is there immediately, would have told. So, people are thinking of ARI, UT, etc. Okay, routine ward attached laboratory examination. We had a good laboratory technician. He found that uh, urine reducing substance was positive and child was having diabetes mellitus at the age of this thing. And the child needed four units per kg for controlling the diabetes. And now he is in France, that boy. Okay, he was very sick at that time. So we didn't have genetic study to find out what is the cause of congenital diabetes mellitus. Now, 75 Summer Delhi MAMC, Irwin Hospital. This is another case. Nine year malnourished, emaciated girl was in the veranda, not inside the ward because child was having only infected scabies. They didn't want the bed to be infected, and then you know, other children also will get it. And they started on antibiotics for skin infection, pneumonia for three days. A proper history and basic examination was not obtained by the resident who was in charge of the veranda cases. 
but because she developed abdominal pain and vomiting with dehydration, she got a bed inside the ward. In every bed, there may be one or two or three patients at a time because it's a government hospital, municipality hospital, and so much of, and that area is you know, around Jima Masjid. So, so much of crowd will be there. She was extremely thirsty and hungry. Highly agitated, irritable, anemic, respiratory rate again, 46 per minute. This child, of course, of course, I happened to be the postgraduate and then I got the urine test done. This also is a case of juvenile diabetes mellitus. See, child was coming with uh, infected scabies and was kept there because of the symptoms and vomiting. She presented as diabetic ketoacidosis and then child was treated. 74 case in Jipmer, eight year old girl with four days, severe abdominal pain, vomiting, low grade fever, abdominal behavior in the toddler. Third day, the girl could not stand and was referred from the district headquarters hospital. I remember still the face of the child. Okay, to Jipmer with acute lower limb weakness, CSF exam was reported normal. Reddish urine, that was the clue. So we could see the bed, you know, there was reddish urine and it happened to be a case of acute intermittent porphyria and hematin was given and child was improved and child went home. Then 1977, before knowing about importance of breastfeeding, a four month old child, professor of pathology. Of course, he was working in Mahatma Gandhi in Jipmer after retirement, he was working in Annamala University. And this daughter is now a doctor. So, so I know LSCS 3.4 kg, mother told physiology professor, I don't want to give because I'm having viral infection. So she said, I'm going to give uh, powder milk, which was uh, there because we were not uh, knowing about uh, breastfeeding importance. Three weeks later, mother told me after feed, sometimes there were skirts of small amounts of water stool. And she said once she saw something reddish in that, but she was not worried. And then she never complained it about it. Four months later, MD pediatric PG who happened to go to church with her, went to the house for dinner, uh, lunch. And she came and told me, she is now in USA as emergency pediatrician. She told me the child is not all right. Srinivasan, why don't you come and see the child at the house? Then and I found the child was so pale and then child was having abdominal distension with peristaltic uh, you know, waves seen of the intestine. And then immediately I took a stool specimen because I remembered what she told. And I looked for RBCs and also occult blood test was done by benzidine test. Nowadays, of course, it's banned. So this child had, then I told the, the asked the fa father's history, the father's side, everybody was having uh, some drug allergy or other, either asthma or allergy condition. And I told them it must be a cow's milk allergy. So we did withdrawal challenge test. That time also we didn't advise her to relact it. We, he, they bought a goat and kept it in the quarters in the garden. And the child started thriving well and all the symptoms disappeared. Child was gaining weight. But one day the goat ran away because the fellow didn't tie the goat properly. So what happened is the gardener went and uh, brought cow's milk diluted and cheated the uh, masters. This is uh, goat's milk. But finally child had three days of diarrhea and she was treated and later she became all right. And of course she became a doctor in a prior Annamala University she studied and then uh, now she's in England. So is it uh, one minute only. So I'll just go to the last person who was uh, I'll skip these cases. This is a case of self-mutilation, Leshnihan syndrome. This child came. Okay, so hyperuricemia, hyperuricosuria. This child was biting and the fingers, etc. So this is, of course, I already shown. Ah, now this is the last current learning from Professor Dr. Tangivelu. He is the one who has made me adjunct professor. He said, I don't, I don't want you to retire. I want you to be there. So whenever you come to uh, Madras, you are going to stay next street with my daughter. So I don't to come and take classes. So I thank him for resurrecting my academic life again. Okay. Some from thorough clinical examination, get appropriate investigations, interpret, inform consultants, start specific treatment, appreciate you have listened to his talk on dengue. So whatever I'm saying is true. And this is his case. When I, whenever I go in his car, he will show what he has learned. So he told me about the dilated cardiomyopathy and turned out to be a rickets. You can see the upper end of the growing of the humerus. There is evidence of rickets changes. So you can see here rickets changes. 
and uh, this child is a case of dilated cardiomyopathy responded to treatment and of course investigation showed that it is uh, you know the vitamin deficiency was there and uh, of course this is a case of beriberi responded to time and cardiac wet beriberi so i thank the organizers for having given me the opportunity i hope i haven't made your uh, stay here uncomfortable thank you so much thank you so much sir reminds us all of the couplet nandri marappadu nandrendru may I request the audience for a standing ovation